Hi, my name is Jan with Jan Patty Quilts and I do needle turn applique. What we're going to focus on today is a technique for doing small inside and outside curves. We're going to do the eagle's wing in from in long <laughs> from the quilt long may she wave. I knew I could say it if I tried hard enough. And we're going to do the bunny's tail, the rooster's tail from birds and bunnies, herbs and honeys. Uh, they're slightly different. In in the long may she wave wing, the curves or waves are smaller and in the rooster's tail they're a little bit deeper. So you, you attack them slightly differently. Uh, the first thing you do of course as you do with everything is draw the pattern on freezer paper, cut it out and then iron it to your fabric. Then you trace around the pattern on the sandpaper board which holds the uh, pattern in place, the paper pattern in place, so you can trace around it because you really do want to make sure you have nice clear lines on both of these to, to get it done. I think we'll start with the rooster's tail in uh, Birds and Bunnies, Herbs and Honeys. My daughter named that. She's very good with words. I'm not very good with words. I'm not very good with names. Okay, I've got to take my glasses off if we're going to do this. Because when I cut it out originally, I cut, you know, your about a fourth inch. You don't have to be precise all the way around. But I didn't go around the curves, the inside and outside curves here, because fabric frays. So now we're going to go do that. And we're going to go about a fourth of an inch. We will trim it, since we're going to start with the tail on this guy, we will do it a little less than a fourth of an inch. Because we're not going to have to worry about it fraying because we're going to sew it under right away. You can go ahead and do it as you sew, but I can't get as smooth a curve or as smooth an outside curve or inside curve if I wait and cut it then. I need to be able to take my needle and have them go around the whole thing, not just a little teeny bit. I tried doing that because somebody told me it works best for them. And it may have worked best for them, but it didn't work best for me. So that is another thing I want to tell all of you when you watch these tutorials. If you watch what I do and there's, you find a way that works a little better for you, do it your way. I mean, these are suggestions. This is what works best for me. But everybody sews differently. So you need to do what's comfortable to you. That's your quilt. Okay. Now we've got that all trimmed, and if I had my applique glue with me, which I forgot to bring, I would glue him here and here and up here so I didn't have to worry about the pins. But I am going to have to worry about the pins. I will survive. And I love these clover silk pins because they're nice and sharp. They go in smoothly. They don't leave gaping holes in my fabric. And I've got one at home in one of my pin cushions that I don't know what happened to it, but it's, it's not rusty on the end. Some child, not that I would have grandchildren that would do this, probably held it in a candle because it looks like it's kind of burnt on the ends and so it goes in roughly. And I used it three times before I said, throw that silly thing away. It doesn't work. Anyway, okay, now that we've got that cut out, what we have to do is go in here and clip. And you clip to the center of the curve and then on each side. Because you want this to be a curve, not a point. And if you just clip to once, it'll be a point. Okay. So you got to do, and we'll do two or three of these before we move to the eagle swing. I really love that eagle swing and I really love my little rooster. 
I love, if you watch my blog at all, you know I have chickens and I have bunnies. So bunnies and birds, honeys and herbs. I also have bee scaps are pretty natural in my quilts. Okay, now I'm going to start on this outside curve and go here. So we need to clip here. I'm not going to start too far out. And I was going to have the needle already threaded, but I forgot. Okay. So we'll have to do it now and we'll hope without my glasses on that I can do it. Because I know I can't do it with my glasses on. And these are the Richard Hemming large eyed needles, size 8 or 9, either one. If you hold it up to the black, it works better. If you're using yellow. Okay, come on, don't be a pain. There we go. Okay. See, and I actually didn't do this on purpose, but my clothes kind of match my <laughs> quilts. Yay! All right. Now, we're going to start here, we're going to take our needle, and we're going to, we've clipped that, we're going to pull it under on the curve, then we're going to go under, and bury the knot. knot. Okay, and then we're going to put our thimble on, and just take the needle and that's why that I really like those sew line marking pencils because they give you nice sharp lines and you can just follow the line. Once you've got your prep work done, which you know I do during the day of cutting out the paper, ironing it to here, trace I, I don't trace around it till I get down to the house really at night, but I cut out a piece of fabric, iron my little rooster to it and then that night I draw around it and cut around uh, when I'm sitting listening to TV while my husband watches it. I'm trying to remember what we watched on Nova the other night that was so interesting. No, it was a nature channel, I take it back. Okay, it was about birds, ospreys, and building nests. And when the osprey builds the great big nest, because it's a big bird, house sparrows come in and use the bottom of the nest <laughs> that the osprey's not using and ha have their little nests in the big nest that the osprey built. That's pretty sneaky. He's got a, that poor woman went and couple went to the whole trouble of building a great big nest and then they turned it into an apartment building. Anyway. It was interesting. Okay, now we're getting to, and I need to trim this, because you can see that's pretty thick to be turning under. So we'll trim it down to about here, like we trimmed the rest of it just a second ago. And here I go with those little pieces of stuff sticking, fabrics, piles of nubbins. Okay. Then you just do your little stitch and you just do two or three stitches and then you stop and turn your fabric. About now my cat usually tries to jump on my lap. Okay, turn it under. If there's a point sticking out, which there is here, you take your needle and push it back under and then put your thumb down on it. Most of the time my cat sits on the quilt on the top of the back of my chair. Top of my chair. Okay, now see that kind of became a point so you have to pull it out. Push this under and pull the other one out. 
so it's a smooth curve. Okay, now, this is why I don't like to clip it before, or as I go, because what I want to do now is take this and do the whole thing and push it under, like that. Okay, and there's a little extra piece. And now see that nice little smooth thing you've got there? Put your thumb on it so it doesn't sneak back out. Like I said, I just sit and sew and listen to Ospreys, or in the morning I'm drinking coffee and listening to my devotion tapes. Okay, now this one's going to need C to pull back out. So we do that. That's why it's called needle turn. You just wiggle it with the needle till you get it where you want it. Oh, I started to say about watching the cooking shows too. I've noticed all the cooking shows, if they're doing something like chopping, they can't stand it if it's quiet. Personally, I like a little quiet once in a while. They start having music in the background while Rachel Ray chops things up or Bobby Flay or somebody else chops or cuts or does something, they have to have music back there. Personally, I kind of enjoy peace and quiet sometimes. Okay. So we don't need music while I turn under the rooster's tail. Anyway, I think you get the idea. I'm not going to do his whole tail. Because we've done two, I'll go ahead and finish the other side of this. And ladies, particularly if you're just starting this, don't be too hard on yourself. I used to have <laughs> a student who, said, who would hold it up when she got done and say it, and then go like this with the block in front of it and say, okay, if you went by on a galloping horse, would it look okay? Yeah, if it looks okay on a galloping horse, it looks fine. So. Okay, there. There we go. We've gotten two of them done. I'll go ahead and do this. And then you pull this one back out like that. And, and you just keep doing it. You just keep pushing under, pulling back out. That's what the needle does. These are pretty dramatic curves because they, it goes clear in on the rooster's feathers. And they would like that. Would look like that. But I think I'm going to stop on that. We're going to go to the more gentle curves of the eagle's wing. And I love that eagle. That eagle in Long May She Wave came from a stamp years ago, I think. It was during World War II that I saw that stamp and thought that would make an awesome quilt block. So what we're going to do here is once again, we're going to take the We've drawn around here all our curves. Probably I should. Go ahead. Take that pattern off. And now on the on the eagle, where he attaches is along this part. This is the wing that goes up 
like his arm. Okay, so it attaches along here. This would be sewed under already, okay? And what you do here is the same thing. You do gentle, usually three little clips, because these aren't as deep, but they're wider. And I know that eagle's kind of intimidating. When I saw him, I thought, okay, we're going to definitely have to do a tutorial on him because those wings are going to scare people to death. But they don't need to. Inside and outside curves are really, once you get the technique down, okay, so we're going to pretend that's already sewed on down there. To the eagle because I would sew the eagle together the whole eagle together and then we're gonna sew the eagle to the background okay so we're gonna pretend the whole eagle is here and we're gonna start with this down here and I think I'll steal my needle back and this time I won't get such a, I always tend to get, <laughs> I mean I'll have this little teeny piece of thread uh, a bird or applique left to sew down and I'll get myself a, a huge long piece of thread. It's just what I'm used to doing so, because I prefer a little longer thread than the shorter one because of threading the needle but then you have to be careful because the longer piece of thread tends to not easier than a shorter piece because it twists more. Okay, now we're going to go around here and like I did last time because you don't want to start the, the, the challenging areas are the outside curves and the inside curves. So if you want to so if you can, you try not to start there. We're going to have to start on an outside curve because this part's already sewed to the eagle. But we'll start just before the curve, not at the point of the curve. Okay, so now we've gone underneath, buried our knot underneath. And now see there was a little there's a little point but you just take your needle there and pull it back under and then as soon as you get it where you want it sometimes you've got to wiggle it a little there and I need to put my thimble on thank you my old clover thimble that I've been using for the last either one year or two years finally got old enough that it started slipping off my finger so I had to get a new one and this one fits a lot better because the stuff stretches eventually but I really prefer them because they don't tend to fall off till they get to that point and that takes them a long time. Okay, now we're just going to wiggle that back under. And I hope you can see that without that stuff in the way. And on the inside curves, well really on, the, on, on these with the smaller curves, your stitches need to be a little closer together because, come on, get back out here. If you make them too far apart, you tend to get points. So this is where you need to make sure your stitches are nice and small. There. 
And can you see that or is this getting in the way? Hopefully not. Okay. Now. Because you're going to take this and there. Now, pull that, then you pull it back out. And you take a couple of stitches and then you adjust, but that's right on the line, so we're okay there. I can see my line. And as you get up here on this where the curves are like this, you may want to trim. In fact, I think I will because that tended to get kind of a little point. This down to about here. But don't do it too far in advance because fabric does fray. Okay. So now we take that and just push it under and we push against our finger that's underneath just like we do with star points there we go see that's a nice gentle curve now we're going to take it and you go clear up here and Swipe your needle and then turn it under. You get out of there. Just run your needle along the lines you've drawn for a couple, three stitches, then take a couple stitches and see if it needs to come out a little. Yeah, it did. Then push it under again. Yeah. See, we're getting good, nice, even curves. And you can also see why this is a small wall hanging instead of a great big quilt. Yeah, or why there's only one rooster with that kind of tail on the big quilt. Because <laughs> this takes a while, but it's worth it. Okay, so we don't need to do the whole thing. That's a little more pointy than I like it to be, but the rest of them are okay. This will just slowly but surely go up and down. I would once again trim this before you go up to sew it under. And you can just do this sitting in your chair at night. You don't have to. You've done the prep work during the day of, sew, of drawing your lines, cutting out your pattern, tracing your lines, knowing where you're going to sew. And then once you get to this point, you're just kind of sewing on the, it's kind of like paint by numbers. Okay, that needs to come out just a little. Get out of there. And once again, I like the 60 weight thread for this. Because your stitches hide and you don't see them. And there you go. And I would do that all the way up, but we're not going to sit here and do that. So, to recap, what we're learning to do today is inside and outside curves, either deep, deeper ones or more gentle ones, but on a smaller scale than we learned in the needle turn tutorial with the big tree, which had a big, easy long curve. These are littler curves and they're frankly a little more intimidating, a little more challenging, but we can do them. They're pretty easy. So you draw your pattern onto freezer paper, iron the freezer paper to the fabric, 
cut the fabric out about a fourth inch around on the tail don't go into the deep ones until just before you sew it then you clip three times in each curve not just once once i'll do a curve uh, do a point you want to curve and then take your needle and slowly stitch it down so we hope you've enjoyed this tutorial from jan paddock quilts if you have please subscribe to our channel thanks and have a good day mm -hmm.